Alrighty, what is going on everyone? So we just finished up our Ridge Rectifier and Smoothing Capacitor notes. So now we're going to move on to three of the most important components for our flyback, which is going to be the MOSFET, the transformer, and our controller. These are colloquial, colloquially known in the electrical engineering community as the dark triad of flyback transformer or converter components so um we'll, we'll explain the reason for that um but yeah so this is sort of uh and once we do more of these we'll kind of start to see that the pattern is that if you look on my notes kind of what we're doing is we're picking all of these component values at the same time and the reason for that is because these kind of all feed off of each other like certain parts of parts of parameters of one component feed into parameters of another component and they all will loop back and affect parameters of that original component and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about when i get here but i have grouped all three of these together because like i said they sort of feed off each other and they affect each other directly right so let's just go we'll start at the top left here and we'll kind of just review my notes and i'll kind of show you how i do it when we uh, get into it so we'll just zoom in right here um so Right, I said, so summary, the, this is for the MOSFET now. So the MOSFET controls the current through the primary side of the transformer, right? So hopefully you already know this. If you don't know this, go back and watch my videos on the flyback converter basics, I think is the name of the video. It uh, should break down how flyback converters work from a fundamental standpoint. So um, definitely go check that out, right? So, like I said, note, this design guide arbitrarily selects a MOSFET and designs a transformer around it. So, yeah, the keyword here is arbitrary. What we're doing is, the reason it's arbitrary in this case is because we don't have some external factors, like I said, like bomb cost or board size or something like that that could be driving some, you know, selections for this, right? So... Um, we're basically arbitrarily, arbitrarily selecting a component value. And the key here is we want to learn how it affects our other components so that as engineers in the future, we can understand like, oh, if I pick a, um, you know, a small transformer, then I need to have a really high switching frequency. Or the uh, higher my switching frequency, the, the higher my switching losses are on my MOSFET or something. Or if I want to make my, my flyback trans, uh, converter more efficient that i need a bigger transformer which is going to cause you know i need a bigger smooth we want to see how basically we want to get to to where the design becomes so familiar to us that we understand oh it's sort of like oh i want to make a i want a car that's that's fuel efficient and fast and safe or something like that right kind of understand you can't have all three we, got, we want to understand the trade-offs in our selection right so the Parameters that we care about for our MOSFET in this case are going to be the VDS max or voltage drain to source max and the, continu the continuous current drain rating, which is also known as ID, right? So the arbitrary part of this is where we have arbitrarily selected our VDS max to be 800 volts, okay? So just know that. We're assuming that we're picking a MOSFET with a VDS max of 800 volts. The next thing I have is we, we need to see how this affects our peak current, right? Because this is not yet looped back around. I don't know. If, yeah, so it's going to loop back around where we'll finish off and we'll calculate our peak current rating later on because just by selecting our VDS max, it's going to affect our transform, right? So this is where we just follow this flow chart to the right side. And like I even have a little note here, right? So VDS max, what it ends up affecting, affecting in our transformer is the turns ratio. Right, so let's just scroll on over to the transformer. Real quick, I'll just give the summary of what the transformer is doing. So it transfers the power from the primary side to the secondary side of the circuit. This is what provides the isolation and the safety aspect, what is the hallmark of the flyback converter. So for the um, transformer, we need to calculate the primary inductance, which is LP, the NPS, which is the primary to secondary turns ratio, and then the primary to auxiliary turns ratio, right? So we see on the notes, it says that our MOSFET VDS max affects the turns ratio. So this VDS 
selection affects our NPS and our NPA, but mostly our NPS, right? So if you hear, if you look over here for my notes on the turns ratio, it just says the maximum turns ratio is limited due to the stress caused by the reflected output, VRO or voltage reflected output. VRO should be limited so that the total stress on the MOSFET does not exceed 80% of its VDS max. Sources of voltage stress are V bulk, VRO, and voltage spike due to leakage inductance. Okay? So we'll see, now we have our first equation we'll talk about, right? So V reflected, aka VRO, is equal to or our V reflected, right? It should be 0 0.8 times 800 volts minus 1.3 times V bulk max. And that is going to equal 250 volts, okay? So we already have our V bulk max. We know our V bulk max is 375 volts. Um, that's how we got that value. So we did 375 times 1.3 gives you 250. Well, let me just quickly double check that just to see. 0.3 times 375 or 87.5 800 yeah it's 250 exactly okay um so then we want to see that we know that mps max is equal to our v reflected divided by our v out so this is the maximum primary to secondary turns ratio that we can have for our transformer. So we know we've already calculated V reflective is 250 volts divided by 24 volts, which is specified in our spec sheet, right? We, we're deciding that we want our output of our power supply to be 24 volts. And so that's why that number is there, okay? So this number, if you do the, the math on this, this divides out to 10.416 and um, so then based on that this calculation we're going to say okay choose NPS to be 10 right so now that we've chosen our 10 it's less than our maximum primary to secondary right so the maximum is 10.4 we chose a value of 10 so next up we're going to calculate our transformer turns ratio NPA or primary to auxiliary, which the auxiliary winding is a side that powers our actual controller, you know, it provides power to the controller. We must maintain a, bi a, bi a, a bias voltage above VDD minimum operating conditions, it's 10 volts. So we want to set bias to 12 volts. So we have NPA equals NPS times V out over V bias. We've already Solve for these values, we know V out is 24 volts. We know V bias is 12. Multiply that by 10, NPA is equal to 20. So the primary to auxiliary turns ratio is 20 to one in this case, right? And this is 10 to one. So like, oh yeah, so here I should have said, I should have, should have specified the, where we got 10 volts from is from our flyback controller data sheet. So this actually tells us this. This is actually a good time to go in and view this and see. Um, we'll talk about the controller for a second. So basically the job of the controller is to switch the MOSFET on and off. That's literally actually its only job. Um, and the parameters that we care about for this, our controller are the switching frequency FSW and VDD, which is the operating voltage, right? We actually already visited how that matters, right? Because so the operating voltage of our controller affects the primary to auxiliary turns ratio, okay? So, like I said, we've already solved and figured out how, how the VDD affects our primary to auxiliary turns ratio. So now we've solved for our transform, we have solved NPS and NPA, and now we're on to the primary inductance value. So scrolling down here to the primary inductance calculation section, let's real quickly take a look at the switching frequency, right? So 
Here I have a note that says switching frequency affects the primary inductance of the transformer. And then I have another note here that says as switching frequency increases, the primary inductance decreases. And then I have here that we're going to set our switching frequency to 110 kilohertz. So the reason I chose 110 is this. So this will actually get into advanced power supply, an advanced power supply topic that um, I want to say is outside of the scope of this video. Just know that this is a very typical value. You'll see if you look at any reference projects or like reference power supplies and stuff, 110 kilohertz is a very typical number you'll get. You'll see numbers like 100 kilohertz, 105 kilohertz, 110 kilohertz is very normal. Um, so just assume, just assume we have great, again, we're sort of arbitrarily choosing this number. Um, so just assume, just, just know that we're assuming our switching frequency is going to be 110 kilohertz, right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to plug that value into this equation. Like I said, FSW selected to be 110 kilohertz. And this is, should, I should note, this is a value that we ultimately can choose, right? I'm not sure what if we're, what the data sheet says is our maximum switching frequency for our flyback controller. I think it might go up to like a megahertz, one megahertz or something like that. Um, but just know that this value can be chosen and understand that, it, like I said, if, if you chose a controller that can have an insanely high switching frequency, just know that you can get a very small, a very low primary inductance. And we can see how that affects the rest of the converter, right? So hopefully we're, you can kind of see I'm touching on topics where like, if you choose this, here's the consequences. If you choose that, here's the consequences. So it's all about what you want. Do you want that fast race car or do you want that super fuel efficient everyday driver, right? So um, continuing on, so we have primary inductance is equal to one half times V bulk min squared times quantity primary to secondary turns ratio times V out divided by V bulk min plus primary to secondary turns ratio times V out all of that squared divided by 0 0.1 times E in times FSW. So these terms should all look very familiar. Uh, v bulk min is the minimum bulk, bulk voltage squared, right? So that's 120 volts. We actually discussed why it's 120 volts in the previous video covering the bridge rectifier and smoothing capacitor design. NPS and V out, we just solved for NPS and we chose it to be 10. V out, remember we specified that to be 24. V bulk min, again, 120. NPS, we already covered that. V out, again, we covered that times 0 0.1 times 141.18. Again, we covered why our PN value is equal to this number in the previous video. And also we have the switching frequency that we have selected to be 110 kilohertz. So just make sure this is the K part matters. It's 110 times 10 to the third power, right? So when we crunch all, when we, when we do all the math on this, we know that the primary inductance is equal to 2.06 milli henries, right? So let's choose our primary inductance to be 2 milli henries. Um, this is just for the sake of ease of manufacturing and for the sake of just having a nice round number. We like, we like round numbers, you know? Okay, so we have now solved for all three major component parameters for our transformer. We know that the, what the primary inductance is. We know what our primary to secondary turns ratio is, and we know what our primary to auxiliary turns ratio is. So now going, rounding all the way back, circling all the way back to our MOSFET, right? We still need to calculate the ID or the current flowing through the drain pin of our MOSFET. Right, and the note here says that ID needs to be greater, continuous drain, the current rating of our MOSFET, right, needs to be greater than I peak MOSFET. So, going down here, so our primary inductance affects the peak current of the MOSFET, right? So, looking at P, the equation for the peak current of the MOSFET is going to be PN divided by V bulk min times NPS times V out 
divided by V bulk min plus NPS times V out plus this quantity right here. here and, we'll, and I'll go in and I won't cover the rest of these terms. So we know what these are, right? We know V bulk min, we know FSW. The only thing here that's new is this LM is that's going to be equal to LP, right? This is just the uh, inductance of our primary uh, magnetic element is, is what the M's in. M is like for magnetism or magnet. Magnetic element, which is LP, right? So it's two milli Henry is what this value is. So um, if you look at this, I did the math here. So this is what this equation looks like with all the numbers filled in. So then we know the I peak of the MOSFET comes out to be 1.95 amps. So the MOSFET current rating should be higher than this value. So whenever you're sourcing your MOSFET, make sure you pick something with a current rating that is greater than 1.95 amps. Okay. So um, I also put another note here and there's a, there's a parameter that you need to check for as well. Um, this is for functionality, which is the RDS on max, which is how much current we can conduct at a given drive voltage. So, um, I'll actually make a video of explaining more about what this is and how it, like it, it has to do with the functionality of a MOSFET, right? So we'll, we'll cover that in a separate video, but basically I just say, make sure the, this is like, this is how much current we conduct at a given drive voltage it needs to be greater than our peak current rating, right? So just, we, we need to be able to conduct greater than 1.95 amps through the MOSFET, right? Cause that is what's required based on our design we know that we will have a peak current of 1.95 amps. So our RDS on value needs to be greater than our peak current rating. So that's also important for that. Um, and that actually wraps up everything that we need to know for choosing our MOSFET transformer and controller. Like we've already selected our controller. Um, so that's kind of already been done for us. But yeah, so like I said, these are all, all the notes I have for selecting these component values. If you have any questions about it, drop it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer or make follow-up videos or whatever until everyone understands this. Um, if you if this helped you out, drop a like. That would, I would really appreciate that. Um, it super it helps out my channel a lot. And like I said, if you want to see keep seeing more videos like this, then subscribe. I'll be releasing videos right in the middle of another big project, and I'll just be releasing uh, the rest of the videos that follow up on choosing the rest of our components for the circuit, all right? And we're just gonna follow with, a, basically the rest of the project um, is gonna be released, you know, day after day now, or not day after day, but every, I release like two or three videos a week. So like I said, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I, I really appreciate it.